feeling of mastery and confidence and can do just the raw i can do this understanding that that you can get better at something that's real confidence and real confidence is the backbone of the mindset of doing more and always being able to compete no matter who you're up against i mean it, obviously you know you step onto a basketball court right now with an nba player it's not going to go well for you i wouldn't put up any money if i were you but you know you might still need to learn that lesson so that's fine do your thing but if you're not confident going into it even if it's some false confidence even if you just have to tell yourself what you have to tell yourself you should still deserve to be confident going into it you aren't just some random do nothing bum you can figure out how to affect the outcome even if you were going to maybe futilely you know flail at them <laughs> you gotta try and then in that mindset of i gotta try you will learn you might not learn what you want to learn. Yeah, it turns out you're not a 70 point or 70% three point shooter. You're like, maybe you already knew that, but now you know for sure. <laughs> so running away from them and just throwing the ball at the backboard from as far away as you can just to try to get a clean shot, that might not be the best technique. But if you don't do it, you're never going to realize what shot you can and can't get off. So then that's a starting point. So now I know I can't shoot it that way and I can't shoot it that way. But the ball did hit the rim when I did this shot. So now I can start practicing that shot and I got to keep trying to figure out. I got to figure out other shots that I can at least get up in the first place. So now we practice figuring out what those shots are. And then you practice that. So you get a regiment of that first shot that you got up. Oh, shit. One of them went in. Two of them went in. Four of them went in. Now we're cooking. Now that is a shot that you can use in game. How many times? I don't know yet. We'll find out. <laughs> so how many times you can use that shot in game? is going to determine how many other shots that you need to develop. You can only get that shot off once or twice in the same game before it gets blocked every single time. You're going to need a lot of other shots. But if you can get this shot up 100 times out of 150, you really might only need three or four more other versions of something, of an attempt. So now, do you nail down that one version of that shot i would say that's a good place to start you get that going then you can work from there you have different variations of combinations to go so then that bleeds into your second shot and so now your second shot is it something that developed off of your first shot is it a combination is it an avenue do you have something that works from a completely different spot on the floor so now he's uh giant standing over you how well can you dribble can you actually get away from him can you create separation can you get past him does your first shot allow you to have some sort of mix up at the top of the key that you can use to get by him because that opens up a whole different avenue for a whole different assortment a whole different type of shot so you're not just mid to deep range anymore but that's playing off of your first shot still that's still something that you are gaining off of practicing your first shot it's develops into your second shot so now are you practicing i either take this first shot or i make my move and then i go into my second shot all right and how fast are you doing how fast are you going through those motions as you go through those shots are you fucking 
Walk up to the line, stand there for 10 seconds. <laughs> like you're taking a fucking free throw, you look up at the rim. Look around. And then you start going at no. No one's gonna let you do that in game. Who is letting you do that? Next rep. Boom, get the ball. Motion, 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 motion. Where am I going? First look, second look, motion, motion, motion. Identifying, motion, motion, fast. Move, move, move. You're moving the whole time as you're going through it. What are you practicing? Are you practicing fake left, go right, go right, fake left? How are you, what are you doing? How fast are you doing it? Is this first shot is... No, okay. And then you go into your next motion and then you... Like, feel the way that it's supposed to feel. Acknowledge the way that you feel as you're feeling it. Be intentional about what you're acknowledging as you're practicing it. Are you boom, boom, boom? Fast movement, fast motion, fast processes, fast. As fast as you can, as fast as you can. Because at the same time, like we talked about, not too slow, but not too fast. Are you actually going to put it up that fast in game? Are you allowing yourself to hit all of the points properly and going as fast as you can doing it right? Because you have to do it right. You have to be practicing it correctly at the same time. And that's a part of how, how strong are you physically? That's something to acknowledge the whole time. You are acknowledging how well you are doing this stuff, how fast you can actually go while doing everything right, because you need to make sure you do it right every time, because if you're practicing a bunch of junk, a bunch of junk is what's going to come out when you're actually playing, right? That's obvious. So then, when you hit every point right, you're catching the ball properly, you're squaring up properly, but even before that, where are your hands, where are your feet, where are your eyes, which way are you facing? Are you just totally giving away the play by just letting everyone know what you're doing all the time with your body language? Or are you just on time and in rhythm? Are you setting up and you're fucking creeping around your defender and you're like, watch out, I'm going to get the ball soon, you better look out. You start like leaning into him to get ready to press away from him like five seconds early, and you're like, Oh, I wonder what the fuck he's about to do. I wonder what play they're gonna run. Like, you can't just give it all away. You're it's everything, it's your footwork, it's your hands, it's your eyes, it's your hips, it's the way that you're turned, it's the way that you're facing, it's the way that you're moving towards the ball, it's the point on the floor that you hit, it's how you catch the ball where your feet are when you catch the ball how you reset yourself do you have to reset are you can you get it up are you keeping everything in line as you're going up are you grabbing the ball and then swinging it over the top and you're just fucking throwing it from the side and that's the only way that you can get your shot off when you're like coming around a screen over at the all of this stuff has to be intentional and determined by you. That's how other people are practicing. That's the mindset. All of the small details add up to the motion that you're creating. It's every small thing adds up to and affects the other parts of your motion. Where is your elbow? Do you, you don't think that that's affected by where your feet are? I beg to fucking differ. Like, which way are you facing? Does that, is that really not affect where your offhand is? Like, why do you not think that where your shoulders are and where they're facing is going to affect your ability to move your arms and your hands? Where your feet literally put you where you are on the floor, that determines where you're reaching to. That affects everything that affects your entire range of motion your footwork and how quickly you are getting around other people affects the way that you do it. it's all of it every single toe needs to be accounted for every finger every fucking 
all of it. How your hair looks as you walk on the floor. <laughs> that also can affect the way that you play. I've seen some people with ridiculous ass hair running around on a basketball court like, bro, just get a hair tie. Every single detail affects the way that you fucking... I want to think about... It was an, it was an anecdote. The first thing that I, as soon as I said hair, the first thing that I thought about was the fact that Reggie Miller and Ray Allen are fucking bald. Two <laughs> of the greatest three-point shooters of all time are fucking bald as a fucking ice cube. It was just like, <laughs> you think that's not intentional? Like, when you get to that level, literally everything has to be intentional. I'm not joking when i say there's a part of me that really might consider the fact that they are were probably bald on purpose and a part of that they could justify and attribute a part of them being bald to being such great shooters like that if they had a giant afro that flipped down into their face every time they jumped they probably wouldn't have had the percentage that they had just saying but it it see that like that seems nonsensical but it really does all of it affects having 10 pounds of hair on your head absolutely affects the way that you jump. I don't know how much 10 pounds of hair would equate to, but your neck feels it. And depend, we'll figure, we're, do you think you're going to shoot the best 3.0% chance that you can by always looking away from the basket? No, your neck, the position of your neck affects the way that you shoot literally all of it all of it all of it it is every single i'm not joking when i say if you feel like there is an aspect that you have thought of that's just like well there's no way that affects me. critical thought challenge connect it make it connect there is something there there is something about what that is and how you think about it and the way that it affects you that changes the way that you do what you are trying to get better at i am not joking find the connection critical thought exercise find it it's there just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not there I said that a few times as well and then when you are gathering all of these small details and working on how you affect them make it real once again we circle back around to make it real write it all down write how it made you feel write about how many times you want to do it write about why you think it's going to make you better write about it Create another layer of thought. Just keep intentionally thinking about everything. That is how you practice productively. You don't stop mulling through it. You don't stop turning it over. You don't stop continuously thinking about it. Some people would call that an obsession. Some people call it passion. Some people call it a waste of time. <laughs> That is all determined by you. None of it matters. If you enjoy it and you enjoy practicing it and you feel like it's making you a better person, nothing else matters. It is going to be the driving force behind you becoming a better person in one more way. And all of this stuff can translate once you start thinking about how you get better at thinking about stuff it's just this this snowball that turns into an avalanche and it's just this huge sweeping force that just moves everything else unimportant out of the way in your life you don't have time for anything else because you're too busy living your life and being the best version of yourself you practice just becoming a better person it doesn't matter what you do. The practice is the same. The concepts are the same. Do you care about why you're doing it? Do you care about what it does for you? Do you care about 
why you want to become better at it? And is it to help other people, even just in a way that helps them become better at it as well? Share your passion. That's the fun in it all. Becoming really good at something and then showing other people how to be that good at it. That is one of the most fulfilling things that you could ever do in your entire life. Full stop. I'm going to go ahead and say it again. What else is there? If you're not doing that, what are you doing? You sensing a common theme if you just so have happened to go up to more than a few of them? What else is there? What else are you doing? What else are you doing that you think that doing this stuff isn't going to make that better? There is, like, I can't imagine what kind of miserable situation that is, but I feel bad for you. There's no replacing it in your life. There is no getting away from it. Being better at practicing is it. Someone that is good at practicing, in my mind, would be forced to have so many good attributes as a person that it would almost require them to be a good person in so many ways. I, I, I can't justify it in any other way. There's no getting away from it. It's how you become better at everything. It's how you give yourself the ability and opportunity to help the most amount of people possible. It really, really is. But you need to be proactive. There's no sitting around and waiting for all the fucking... all the right time to be the, like... There's no denying it. I not for me at least. I can't I can't figure out how to do it anymore. It shows you ways that you can't begin to see if you don't push yourself, if you don't require more for yourself. And when you're practicing right and you're practicing full speed. It shows you who you really are. And that's the next step. Finding out who you really are. And you just push yourself to extremes. 